It's medicinal. Don't judge me. Hey I decided to do some more shirtless content. Sometimes Leandra logs on to Anthony Vela's YouTube and she comments about how sexy I am and stuff. It's pretty neat, it's pretty neat. Did I make it without getting anything on the camera? Oh no, the camera's wet. But I think I protected the lens. Oh boy. So this is the state of things around here right now. We've got paramotors down for maintenance. One of them is, one of them I'm doing a full overhaul on. It's raining, everybody's napping. I got a mess to clean up in here. I got stuff to unpack. I got tools laying out. I got projects in process. I got, this is the time of the year when I do this stuff. So I really need to get to it. I've been sort of in a bind though. About the time that like I quit taking paramotor training for the winter, I developed this, uh, this plantar fasciitis in my foot and it's been killing me to stay on my feet for extended hours like I used to. So I've been trying to stay off my feet and let that heal and I'm sitting on stools and I'm sitting around. Oh boy, yeah, just admiring the mess. I guess let me get to it. I really wanna go put a shirt on though. It's cold. <laughs> it's gonna get cold. Let's do that. It's always kind of interesting just to, to look at the mess at the end of it all. If you own a shop, you kind of know what I'm talking about. It's, you're done with the project, your mama's not gonna come in here and say, you better pick that stuff up. So you just leave it laying there. And I do, <laughs> because I gotta go. It's time crunch thing. It's not a laziness or a whatever. It's a taking too much, too much at once. Taking a bigger bite than I can chew up and swallow. That's what ultimately the shop messes consist of. Time to pile everything up. I got a method for cleaning the shop. I put all the tools in a pile, all the parts in a pile. And start moving it to where it goes. Oh, that sound. That sound. Let's get to it. I'm doing work here. I figured I would break into this thing on camera and let's uh, see how it goes. Something that we've come into already with this machine is the pull start. Now, I noticed it had some resistance to it and let me just show you. I didn't film this part, but I pulled the starter out. I, I lubed it up, put it all back on. It, it's retracting good now. Whatever was in there, I think was just normal grit and dust. And everything is working properly but what i did notice is is this spring has kind of a sharpish edge on it right there and it was cutting into the into the starter cord put some tape around it previously just to sort of you know halt the progress but ultimately i took a piece of fuel line and i slid it underneath the spring here and retied everything nothing worthy of a video i don't guess it was just some you know preventative maintenance but i'm gonna start with everything give this motor a full overhaul starter looks great and take the fuel line out, replumb it, check everything out, get it ready for the next season so that I don't know that I'm going to change the carb yet. I might take it off and clean it and check it out. I was getting some lulls in the power. I've got a brand new carburetor, but this one actually carburetes quite well when it's not gulping air. So I'm going to see if replumbing it will help that and we'll find out just here soon. Air box, loose. I don't know if I want to take it off or leave it there. Oh heck, I'll take it off. It's an overhaul. Why not? I make these safeties so that they'll hold good but not come off easy. <laughs> there we go. Oh, come loose now. Come loose. Tube inside the tank. Still feels pretty good. I don't know if that's where it's drawing air from or not. I can only see the air at the top of the pipe or the bubbles. I know, air, fumes, whatever. I, I'm pretty sure it's air drawing in there. But I can only see them come up. I can't see where they're coming from in flight. That's not something that I have access to with my mirror. Maybe go ahead and take the carburetor off. I don't know. Maybe not. Show you how I like to clean them. WD-40. Compressed air.
When you're done with the compressed air, you can just wipe them off with a regular old towel or rag. Cut me a new shop rag here. Humidity 40 is an excellent cleaner. Looks like we still got a good electrical connection there. Oh, that's in good shape. Stuff out of the little cracks and such. Wipe off all the excess. It might just hit this other side too here. Ain't gonna hurt a thing. Personally, I never drag my knife straight down parallel with the line. I like to shave off some of the some of the stress at the connection. Just just thin the thin the tube, so to speak. But I figured I'd turn the camera on and do it. I think I'm just gonna maybe skip this primer bulb. You know, go ahead and replace all the parts. I got some new ones over there. Overhauling it. Yeah, it's yellow, it's brittle. It's not to the point of breaking yet, but that's what, I mean, you don't want it to break. This is why we do these type of activities. We're gonna take that off and we're gonna put a new one on. Let's see, I got some fuel line right here. There's a piece that's good. Here's a piece that's good. <laughs> if you've saved the end pieces when you're done with a project, ultimately you'll have some pieces for the next project without having to open a new package up. You can cut straight down the middle like so. As long as you don't dig into it, then you can take your pliers and just pop it off. This primer bulb's getting kind of old and cracked anyway. Now let's cut it so nobody else will use it. Probably where it was drawing the air from. You'll see the uh, the cracks forming at the edge there. Just old dry rot stuff. It's it's not failed yet, but one of those things like it's coming, you know. It's coming. What's that? Your engine will die. Oh, I better fly good then. Thank you. So let's take out one of these new bulbs. Open it up. Make sure it's in good shape. And then reinstall. Yeah, see, I don't see any, like, cracks or ducks on that. That all feels good. Solid connection there. Mm. A trick if you want to slide these things on really easy. Wet them with some alcohol. Pour a little in the cap air. It don't take much. Now try not to get it on your fingers because it'll make your fingers slippery. So many jokes. I ain't gonna do it. Maybe I'd like to go for more wholesome content, huh? No jokes. No jokes. No penetration jokes. No fitting in the hole. No push real hard and it'll go in. Don't slip. It might hurt. I believe that's on there. All right. That's the one that's gonna go down to the tank. This new one. I believe I'm gonna remount the primer in a slightly different place as well. So it needs to be accessible most most easily from the front. Right here? Yeah, I think so. I think that'd be fine. Plenty of room. Hmm. I believe that's the move. We're gonna mount it right here on the frame. So that means we need to make some standoffs. Standoffs are pretty easy. It just takes a couple of zip ties, a couple inches of fuel line. I like. I think I'm gonna stand it off a little further though. How far back do I want it? Let's have a have a gander at that. I'm gonna be reaching over here, squeezing it right in here. So I want it to stick out a pretty good bit. Let's do that. Let's make one long and one short. Maybe this and this. That's gonna put it about level. I like that better. So what you do is you run your zip tie through it and then back through it like so put that oh, we'll just say this side well, which, well it's important which one's top and bottom short one goes on the bottom so i guess that one right and i just put them right over the crimp just right over the middle crimp there same thing on this one but this one's going to have the longer one there you go and you zip them you zip it onto the frame wherever you want to put it there i did mine offset to get it in a different spot i'm going to try a new location that one looks foggy though like something else has been going on with it i might save that for a non-flight application this piece here so wet that apply it i wonder if it comes off easily no not really <laughs> giving it a pull may seal it up a little bit though we're gonna let it sit like that and see you know what I think I'm gonna go no clips. I'll test it and keep an eye on it. If I see one of them slipping, then I'll know. We'll go ahead and stick this one on, zipper it up. And if you gotta take them off and redo them, whatever, it's just a zip tie. Make sure it's on the right spot on the metal before you really cinch it down. And that should do oak. Okay. Now something you wanna, you wanna figure on when you put this thing down in this tank is just which way the bend in the tube goes. 
And what I'm getting at with that is this machine torques to the left. So you're going to be tilted to the left so the fuel will slosh over to that left corner of the tank. You wouldn't want it pointing over to the right and perhaps slurping air. So you always want to make sure you bend points towards whichever part of the tank is going to be the lowest when you're under thrust. There's an O-ring there. Is it degraded? Let's see. I don't see any cracks. I tell you what wouldn't hurt it would be a double O-ring seal. One on each side. Yeah, that might be acceptable. Let's do it. I got some. They're cheap. Why not? Got a, like a multi-size. I believe this is metric as well. Yeah. The new big one on the bottom. And then the new little one on the top. Now let's connect these lines, why don't we? I need to make sure that I got this on first. Do a little dab of alcohol there. Don't take much. This line, does it need to be routed any special way? No. Okay, so apply that there. Can you see? You see, if I'd taken a knife and put scratches down the side of these barbs, that would be a place that could introduce air into the line. And we don't want to do that. Now, I'll put that back in there. Slide this down on top. Double O-ring connection. Something else that this is going to do, replacing this bulb, is allow no pockets for bubbles together in the bottom portion of the fuel line. There'll be a bend in the top as it goes into the carburetor here. And it could, it could capture some bubbles there, but that's okay too. We'll see how it runs. I mean, it's just a paramotor. Every flight is a damn test flight on a paramotor. So glad that they're ultra safe machines to fly. Gives me a good feel. All right, nothing's rubbing or touching or in a weird spot. Everything feels secure. This fuel line, I don't know. I might, I might go ahead and zip it up right there. I believe we're going to put it in front of the wire right here. And when you got a spot where you need to make this up, instead of putting a kink in it, something I like to do is use another zip tie and just interlock them with each other. Takes an extra penny, not a whole lot of extra time. So you go from this zip tie to this one. And that way it's not trying to twist anything in an unnatural way. Tighten this one down with the line. Tighten this one down with the frame. And keep it from moving around. It don't even have to be real tight as long as it ain't loose. Now you'll want to keep an eye on anything like that and inspect it for chafing. And make sure that it's not rubbing. That's part of your standard pre-flight. Check your fuel delivery. I mean if you do care that the motor's running or you are going to fly in a you know, shitty fashion. There's your release button. When you're starting one, when you're priming one, you got to push that before you can squeeze this. All right, let's see if it primes up. Primer bulb's filling up. There we go. There's some fuel. I can see fuel dripping out of the carburetor here. Take my new rag or my old rag. I'm going to wipe up fuel with the old rag here. It looks good. One other thing I'm going to do is take the uh, tachometer, 92.9 hours, and I'm going to mount it to the frame here and, and just zip tie that on so that it is not in the way, not a thought, not a problem. I don't want it interfering with the harness or the reserve. That's where I've been traditionally mounting them inside the harness here. Like I just have them hanging inside there. I still want it out of sight, but more like easily sightable. Like just mount it here on the frame where you could glance down from the back and see it. Inspect our air box and our air box boot. Make sure it's in good shape. Get all the gas and the grease and all that junk off of it. Something good about having a lot of oil in the air box, you may want to consistently wipe it off and keep it spotless. But you know when dust gets drawn into here, if that dust hit some oil it's going to stick and if it doesn't it'll go right past so having a real greasy grimy air box is actually good that means the grime is getting caught in the grease and it's not entering the carburetor so you guys that are all stickler for keeping it like completely wiped out clean that's that's not necessary i mean i like to i like to have some oil accumulate in mine it may look tacky but overall it's going to function safer so it's not ever about looks when you're talking about aviation i mean it's in, I guess it's important to some people, but I don't know. I don't really care. As long as it works right, I don't care what it looks like. It's kind of my personal feelings on that. But I never expect it to work right, so 
I know that's been a common thing repeated in many, many of my videos, but I see it so often. You know, not, not as often as people getting their hand in the propeller and the more dramatic stuff, but not being able to land good when the engine goes out. That's... Uh, super important right so i was right about the uh right about the safety strap i'm gonna put it on the inside of the primer there that's where it was connected this is always kind of fun you like need that third hand typically i got students around and we're doing this in a classroom setting and i'll just have them help me do it i figured since i'm by myself we'll do like a video making ah uh, my fingers won't fit None of my fingers will fit. It's good that it's fitting kind of tight. There we go. I like to put the hose clamps on so that the screw is facing me. That's going on there. And of course the camera died. GoPro. GoPro fail. Just like usual. The only thing that I had pending was a spark plug boot skirt. I lost that in a field somewhere and I looked and looked and I couldn't find it. And it works okay without it, but to get optimum cooling, you know, running there all the way over the head. Just a boot skirt. Then it's test run, then test fly, and make sure everything's in good working order. I guess I won't be filming that because it's freezing cold. Yeah, hell, I'll film it. I'll film it. You in? Hope it's good content. Okay, you asked for it, you got it. Wasn't it? <laughs> yep. That good content? It's gotta be good content. I figured out maybe what was wrong with it. The little tiny screen in the carburetor. Yeah, everybody knows which one I'm talking about. It's completely mucked up with junk. I'm gonna clean that up, blast the stuff out. Oh, I need that air back, please. So I'm gonna use my old air tool. I'm gonna blow all the junk out of this carburetor and we're gonna put it back on and do another refire and see if it goes. So I rebuilt the car, primed it. This is the test crank. Click. Oh, no. That didn't sound good, did it? Click. Oh, well. Good. Spark plug wires. Good. Click. So no spoilers here. The mystery will be solved before the end of the video, but the high idle has me concerned. I'm listening and thinking about it. I'm checking to maybe see if my throttle cable is being pulled, and that's the reason that it's idling high. But ultimately, I decide to run it. I did fix the problem with the machine, so it is running. It's no longer like choking out and dying, but there was another problem, and I'm gonna figure that out right here, right now. Kill switch works. Sounded good though. Yeah, it certainly ran better than it did in the previous cut because I cranked it and it went, oh! <laughs> oh, it's smoking. Look at that. I'm trying to decipher where the smoke's coming from there. It could just be some that I sprayed on the engine. I sprayed it with some WD to. Yeah, it smells kind of like WD. <laughs> That's a check that you can do anytime with any paramotor. If you blip it really hard and it chokes out, it's because you're opening the valve and it ain't airing. So if by doing that causes it to die out, then it's obviously in a lean condition. So we're gonna mess with the mixture slightly. This is old school carburetor, so it's only got a high mix. I'm gonna open that up about a half a turn. I'm also gonna lower the idle down another half a turn. We'll just make some aggressive adjustments and see. Is the smoke coming out of the dam? Oh, it's coming out of the damn carburetor. Why? This is why right here. It was hard for me to see because it's tucked away on the bottom side of the carburetor, but the brown spacer that you see there between the orange and the silver carb, 
that was flipped around 180 degrees. And because of that, it was allowing a tiny little hole. It was venting to the outside, so the case was exposed to the outside and it was pulling air. Did I not put that on right? <laughs> oh, I don't think I did. I don't think I did. I think that should be flipped around. It's probably drawing air running lean. Hmm, okay. Fail number 18. Okay. Final test. Clip. Silence so low now. <laughs> Barely crank. Well, I was right about the too much air versus fuel when you cracked the throttle because it had that little bitty quarter inch hole. It wasn't even a quarter inch, I think it's what, three, four millimeters? That introduces enough air in there that it totally throws off your mix. So now I need to open up the idle. It ain't smoking. <laughs> Time for a test flight, no? Yeah, guess what I did? I've been talking the whole time with the camera off. That's how bad I suck at this. I've got to be the worst YouTuber out there. I can't even remember to turn the damn camera on. I heard talking to myself in the sky like a, uh, uh. So the test flight's going great. I'm just messing around out here low. It's cold. I didn't want it to last very long, but I've been up here for maybe 45 minutes. I think the GoPro is still recording. Uh I don't know if I recorded a thing on that flight. I just did the test flight on the 80. It works great. I fixed it. Whatever was wrong with it is fixed now. I'm gonna put all this shit up and then, oh, it looks like we got food burning on the grill. Better go take care of that. Love guys, got out. <laughs>